This just came across my desk. Critics of Dungeons & Dragons managed to get boycott D&D movie trending online. Patrons and commenters have asked for my analysis, so here we are. Personally, I don't participate in any kind of boycotts. I just don't think they're that effective. But since it's trending, it's news, and I cover news. And if you enjoy independent coverage of the gaming industry, you want to subscribe to this channel. I also include RPG content. Next week, I'll present my Reviled Society Supercut. I dramatize my campaign with miniatures and models and show you the inside of my DM's notebook. It's 40 minutes with all of the Wizards of the Coast content scrubbed from it. An entire urban-based campaign for you to steal. No licenses are necessary. The D&D movie is a big part of Hasbro Wizards' future plans. The budget is mysterious. The press keep calling it a big-budget film, but... Despite my research, I cannot find an exact figure on that budget. I read somewhere Hasbro put up between 5 and 10 million, and the nation of Ireland put up 35 million in tax credits. Paramount Pictures would foot the rest of the bill. Chris Pine is getting paid $11 million to star. The rest of the cast includes Michelle Rodriguez, Reggae Jean Page, and Hugh Grant. They're certainly named celebrities, but I wouldn't be surprised if all their salaries together was less than the $11 million paid to Chris Pine. The directors have made one other feature film, Game Night. I know one of them played Dungeons & Dragons on Freaks & Geeks, so good for him. But they'd be relatively inexpensive, so it's a modestly budgeted film. The special effects, at least that dragon scene, looks pretty good, so that money seems to have been well spent. And Hasbro has a strong track record at the box office. Their hits include Transformers, which is at Universal, Ouija, which I didn't even know about, but it was made for $6 million, and it made $100 million. It's probably Hasbro's most profitable film. And the G.I. Joe series, and now Dungeons and & Dragons at Paramount. G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra made more money in the United States, but the sequel, G.I. Joe Retaliation, actually made more money worldwide. The most recent film in the series, Snake Eyes, rolled to Snake Eyes. It actually lost money at the box office. Just a couple days ago, Paramount announced there would be a D&D series on Paramount+. Plus, and it's set in the same world as the movie, which is The Forgotten Realms. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was called Forgotten Realms, and it might star some of the same people who were in the movie. So after the failure of Snake Eyes, Hasbro has a lot riding on this film, and it would be a very stinging and public rebuke if fans were to reject it, and it could damage Hasbro's relationship with Paramount. This film is Hasbro's shot at bringing D&D into the mainstream. I don't think the primary audience is the D&D community. I think it's normies, it's mainstream moviegoers and kids. And I come to this conclusion because Hasbro chose to kick off its publicity campaign at San Diego Comic-Con in 2022 instead of Gen Con, where gamers go. Comic-Con is not even a comic book convention anymore. It's more of a media convention. It's part of a publicity machine. Film studios use it to build hype for their upcoming releases. When I was a teenager going to comic book conventions, the guests were like comic book creators. It was like, hey, there's Marv Wolfman. Wow, George Perez. <gasps> Neil Adams. Like, the artists and writers were actually the stars of the conventions. Now it's about press conferences and people in costumes, and judging by the sales of comic books, not that many people are reading them. There are Marvel shows on Netflix where the comic book sells maybe 10 or 15,000 copies a month. When I release a new video, it does 10 or 15,000 views in a day. Like, where's the Deathbringer movie? Yeah, where is the Deathbringer movie? And that's the point. Companies like Disney don't really care about comic book fans, and I don't think Wizards or Hasbro really cares about D&D fans. If they did, they'd still have a presence at conventions like Origins and Gen Con, but they don't. They really think that those fans are in their pocket. And I don't mean the design team. Jeremy Crawford, Chris Perkins, Mike Merles have all shown up at Gary Con. Now, they love playing Dungeons & Dragons, but the parent company doesn't feel the need to go to conventions anymore. Yet, for the movie to succeed, that core fan base needs to be there, and right now, they're pretty irritated. And if the movie fails, it's going to fail big. That's the thing about movies. They're very big. When they have a premiere, it's filled with movie stars, and these Hasbro executives will get to go to that premiere, and all of a sudden, they're mixing it up with rich and beautiful people. Opening weekend receipts are reported late Sunday or early Monday morning, and that determines the public view as to whether a film is a box office hit or it's a bomb. And Hasbro can't hide that. They can massage other things like D&D Beyond subscribers dropping off, they could say, well, this past quarter we had a slow Christmas season. And they could sweep that under the rug. 
But they can't do that with box office numbers. They're just way too public, and it's completely out of Hasbro's control. And here's the thing. The real value for Hasbro in these movies is not in the box office. It's in the merchandising. They get to sell all the toys and the t-shirts and get to keep the money. If kids see the Dungeons & Dragons movie and Hasbro can convert them into gamers and then convert them into subscribers for D&D Beyond, all the subscribers that quit over the last month, all 40,000 of them, it wouldn't matter. That is Hasbro's strategy. They always want to be going after the next generation of D&D players. What's going to happen? Well, it's anyone's guess. A lot of it depends on the quality of the film. I've seen fan boycotts before, notably when Michael Keaton was cast in Tim Burton's Batman and Daniel Craig was cast as James Bond in Casino Royale. But Batman and Casino Royale were classic films, and the controversy was quickly forgotten. Of course, the last Bond movie really did suck. I mean, aside from the fact they blew up James Bond. How do you have a Bond film with Ana de Armas, and Bond never makes out with Ana de Armas? That's just artistic negligence. But I digress. What Hasbro doesn't have is a Batman or a James Bond fan base. I think the support for this film is kind of weak based on anecdotal evidence of my video performances. When I did the review of the D&D trailer, it only got about 16,000 views. I've done four videos on the D&D movie. None have broken higher than 22,000 views. Meanwhile, if I do a video on Vox Machina or Critical Role, those videos get at least 50,000 views. One of them got 220 20,000 views. It is completely anecdotal, but it seems to me people are more pumped up for Critical Role and Vox Machina than the D&D movie. Just how angry are the fans? I posed this question in a YouTube poll. Does the current OGL scandal make you more or less likely to see the new D&D movie? 95% of respondents say they're less likely to see it. So Hasbro has a real nightmare on their hands and only about eight weeks to make up with fans and work this out. I don't see how Hasbro couldn't recoup their initial $10 million investment, but a bomb movie could damage their relationship with Paramount. Why would Paramount put up millions of dollars for a D&D series if the movie tanks? And the next time Hasbro approaches Paramount with one of their IPs, like, hey, let's turn Micronauts into a movie, Paramount's going to remember, the last time we partnered with you on a film, we made the film, and we made a decent film, and then you screwed it up by irritating your fan base. A successful D&D movie should be a layup. The movie doesn't even have to be that good. How many people list a Jumanji movie or a Transformer movie as one of their all-time favorites? Yet these movies continue to make money even though they're mediocre. If this film underperforms, Hasbro's leadership is going to look absolutely incompetent. Then you'd see activist investors calling for Hasbro executives' heads. But if the movie's a hit and it connects with younger audience and they become D&D players, you could see D&D's popularity explode to a whole new level. I think enthusiasm for the D&D movie is soft, but what do I know? I thought the enthusiasm for Avatar was soft. Like, I don't know anyone that thought Avatar 1 is their, the greatest film of all time. So it's anybody's guess. But that's what I think. What do you think? Please share in the comments below. Also below, you'll find links to Dungeon Craft on Facebook and Patreon, and links to my games, Deathbringer and the Eldritch Hack. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. May all your rolls be 20. Hollywood, I'm open to negotiations, and I want to star with Honor to Armas, and I will not make the same mistake as James Bond. Now get my t-shirt and watch more Dungeon Craft.